Hi friends, welcome back or welcome to the channel if you're tuning in for the first time. So I took the week off and as many of you know who follow me religiously, <laughs> I did not post last week but I have been sewing behind the scenes. I am going to be entering into a few challenges and participating into uh, challenges that I have been asked to participate in and I'll talk about that today. You may have noticed that I uploaded a video earlier this morning about the pattern hackathon that is going on throughout the month of July. It is hosted by the beautiful Chris. She goes by the unsocial over on Instagram. I'll put her link in the description box below so you could go over and follow her. And she will go into more detail about the challenge, the pattern hackathon that is going on throughout the month of July. And you can learn about that. So it is a challenge that uh, has 16 sewists that are featured and so she does have like this setup where it's already organized where she has sewists and even though it is a challenge that features sewists she also has opened it up to the public and so everyone can participate in it follow along all you have to do is uh, hack a pattern and tag um, the use the hashtag pattern hackathon and also use at unsocials uh, tag so that you can be included into the challenge. You do have um, prizes that are associated with this challenge and uh, she, uh, among the 16 sewists, uh, she has broken us up into uh, pairs of two and so each group will um, share their inspiration and their ideas and their pattern hacks throughout a specified time. And during that time, we will um, introduce the uh, giveaways and things of that nature and you can participate in the giveaway so that way you can uh, get um, a chance to enter for the prizes. So with all of that said, I'm going to go ahead and uh, talk a little bit about some of the things that I have been doing this week. So that is basically the focus of this video is what I've been sewing. And so the pattern hackathon um, pattern that I have chosen with my with the person that I have been paired with, which is, um, her name is Carol and I'll put her handle here as well. So you can go over and follow her on Instagram and, uh, see her style and what she decides to do with the pattern that we have chosen. And so the focus of this video is basically to share with you what I've been sewing, some of the things that I have been making. So I have created, like I'm in the process of doing my muslins. And so I will share with you what I have been doing. And so the pattern that Carol and I have selected is this Butterick pattern, which is the B6930. I won't go into too much detail about, um, what my plans are for this because I already put that video up and I'll just link it in the description box below. It's literally the video before this one. And so you can go and watch that. So we selected this pattern here. I have the size 12 to 20 and I selected the size 16 because I omitted the wrap section of the bodice and I created this uh, center seam or I can put the center on fold. So I will share with you what that pattern looks like and how I created the pattern to get with I, what I want. I'm still in the process of choosing fabrics, but again, look at that video and you'll see some of the beautiful different silhouettes that I'm trying to create with this pattern. Basically, I just want the bodice portion of the pattern and I'm going to make a, a tiered dress with a yoke skirt. So I am really excited. The mock-up is coming along really well. And again, I'm going to go ahead and share with you real quickly how I uh, created my center front so that I can actually omit the wrap portion of the, the top. Okay, so here is the pattern pieces for the front and the back. So this is the bodice piece here. And as you can see, I have um, size 16 and 18 here. Uh, the 18, I think, would be um, best for me for the wrap portion of it but without the wrap um, a 16 is just fine and so what I did is I so this is the center front line here this is the center front and for the center front with your wrap you have these two notches down here and basically once you cut this piece out twice you're going to overlap them on top of one another and match up the notches and the center seam. So I didn't want the wrap, of course, and so I just wanted this center front portion, which is perfect because um, that tells you where the center front um, is going to be on your body and it should be right 
um, between your um, your breasts there. And so um, on a vertical line. So I decided to just go ahead and fold this piece back here, creating my center front. Now, if you don't want like a button, a button center front or anything like that, this is just going to be perfectly fine. You don't need to do any other adjustments. The only uh, modification that you would need to do is create um, your bias binding or your neck facings if you're going to do a neck facing. This pattern calls for bias binding. You can definitely just, you know, do a bias bind around the neckline and leave it as that. I created facings because I feel like I just like facings more. They're more stable and they offer more support. And so I decided to create my facings for that. And I just follow along the line here of the front bodice there. And then if I want a center front seam, I will go ahead and add five eighths of an inch on this edge here and create a center seam instead of um, putting it on fold. So that's what I did for my front bodice section to create uh, the look that I want to have uh, just for a regular raglan top with no wrap. So that's what I did for this bodice here for that hack. And let me show you what the muslin looks like. So this is the muslin for the hack that I created. And as you can see, I have ruffles around the neckline and it's very rough. This is a rough draft, so it's not perfect, but I have ruffles around the neckline. And basically I just measured um, from the center front all the way around the neckline and back around to the center front. And I doubled that pattern. Uh, and then I just gathered the neckline. So the width of the, the band is about two inches wide. And I gathered that together and I put it around the neckline. Very simple, very easy. Um, again, these are my facing pieces here. That's on the inside. If I turn the garment out, you can see. But first, let me tell you what's going on on the outside before I turn it on into the inside of the garment. So this is the um, center front. And for this particular garment, I put it on a seam so i created a center seam just in case i wanted to put like faux buttons shank buttons going up the center front it looks much better if you have a center seam because it kind of looks like um a button uh placket is there when you put your buttons on so if i want to put uh, faux buttons on or not faux buttons but like create like the illusion that it has uh, a button band then i'll put a seam down the center of it and then put my buttons uh, just measure where I want my buttons, my shank buttons to go and put it on the top that way. Um, and if I don't do that, then I'll just put this on the fold. So that's the, the first thing that I did. And so for the sleeves, I didn't uh, do the full length of the sleeve just simply because I think the fabric that I want to go with, and I'll share with you what it looks like here, an image of it. Um, it is a cotton lawn from Joanne and Right now, I think it's on sale. It's like 70% off or something like that. And so really good deal because they're usually like $14.99 a yard and I need quite a bit for this project, especially because I'm doing a gathered skirt. And so with that particular pattern, it has a really long sleeve and I decided I'll do a shorter sleeve because number one, it's summertime and number two, I would rather put um, the fabric into the tiered skirt instead of the sleeve. And so I have a shorter sleeve and I had to do some adjustments to the sleeve because the sleeve has like this uh, angled cut on the edge of it. Um, you can't really see it with this view because it has a ruffle on it and you can't see it with this view because it has an elastic in the band but the sleeve by itself without elastic and without a ruffle has an angled cut and I didn't want that and so I just wanted a regular straight cut because I think I'm going to put elastic in the sleeve and make it have like a little bit of a bubble type look so I think that's what I'm going to do for that portion of it the yoke piece here um so I just basically took the front of the peplum and because the front peplum has between the bodice and the peplum you have elastic going around the waistline I didn't really want a lot of gathers around the waistline and so I brought the skirt peplum pattern in 
just a little bit more it's not fitted to the waist but it's it will only require elastic in the back versus having elastic around the entire waist the way that I designed it and so I used the peplum but I sized it down because I didn't want to gather it to the waistline and so um and then also size the waistline down just a tad as well so that I can actually get a smaller like I said waistline and not have too much gathers or too much um, elastic in the back of my garment so that's what I did for this piece here and um, and then I made a skirt um, to go at the lower edge of this that's going to be gathered onto the yoke of this and this whole design was inspired by a Zimmerman dress that I saw and again I'll put that here actually it was a few dresses that I saw it seems to be like this um, really trendy classic silhouette that is uh, trending for summer of 2023 and so I decided to do that and I'm really excited with how everything is coming out so far and yeah let me go ahead and turn the top out so you can see the facings here again this is a really rough draft and so it's not going to look pretty but this is what it looks like so far so here's my neck facings on the inside so as i mentioned before so this piece here is going to get sewn into the yoke part so that won't move at all and as i stated before for my facings i just i stopped at the shoulder line here once i put the everything together the bodice front the, sh the uh, sleeve because it's a raglan sleeve and the back once I put everything together I went ahead and measured where I wanted my front facing to um, to begin and end and so it begins at the center seam here of the shoulder line and um, just comes down into the end of the bodice front and then for the back same thing i started it here at the beginning of the shoulder line and i just went around the entire length of the back and went around to the shoulder line the first part of the raglan sleeve shoulder line on this side and that's how i got my back facing piece there so that's my uh, progress and what I'm going to be doing for the uh, pattern hackathon that is hosted by Chris of Unsocial. Next, I have been working on this pattern here, which is the Simplicity S9702. And I am so happy to be working on this pattern. I've been wanting to do this for spring and I didn't get get around to it. And so I was able to do it for this summer and I am excited. So for this dress, I am using a Minerva fabric. So this one, I do have my fabric chosen and everything is um, in progress to actually, you know, do my project for this and so the fabric that i'm using is this lovely fabric here by minerva it was sponsored um, by minerva it has already been washed can you guys believe that i have washed it and pressed it and it is gorgeous it retained its color it is just so so gorgeous um, usually i wash my fabrics twice i try to wash my fabrics twice so that um it shrinks as much as as much as much as it can in the wash before I actually sew it and also um, so that I can see what the color retention is like so that I can actually report back to you guys and let you know if the color retention is good um, in this case I only washed it once but I really think that it's going to hold up there's no peeling it's just so gorgeous and I am excited to use this now if you go on the Minerva site you'll see that you have three other colors to choose from besides this one but this one is my favorite it is absolutely gorgeous and I am going to be making view let's see view C here I have not decided if I'm going to do like a longer sleeve or the shorter sleeve this is a rayon chalet fabric and so it's going to be really light and weight and even though we're in the summer months I can actually stand a sleeve like this that's more of like a three-quarter length sleeve 
Um, and I think it would be nice to choose that because I can actually wear this in the summer as well as a uh, part uh, throughout the spring as well and maybe even the fall. So I thought about doing the longer sleeve here but I'm not quite for certain. I might actually do the shorter sleeve. But I definitely am going to be doing, oh, I said view C, not view C because I have three yards of fabric. I can only do view B. So I'll be doing view B here and I'll share with you the mock-up with that one. So here's the mock-up for that one. Um, so I didn't put the sleeve on yet, but the sleeve pattern is really big, especially for this view here, view C. You have quite a bit, bit of room because you're gathering in your sleeve at the lower edge there. And so you have quite a bit of room. You don't have to really worry about it. I think for the size I chose, I think I chose a size 16. And that size 16 for the sleeve was like, I want to say 21 inches for the fullest part of the bicep area of the sleeve. So um, really big, like I usually need a really big sleeve. And so a 20 is plenty room. I think that's like maybe five inches of ease for me. Yeah, because my, my biceps are 15 inches in circumference. So yeah, um, 20, uh, it's a size 20 or 21, so five to six inches. So I'm not worried about doing the sleeve. And I also tested to make sure that I didn't need to do like a forward shoulder adjustment or a sloping shoulder adjustment. And so I'm not really worried about the sleeve, so I didn't do the sleeve. Now, as you can tell, I sewed my center front up to this notch. So they have a notch on the pattern that is um, indicated on the pattern for your facings because this pattern actually comes with facings, which I actually, I love that about this pattern because I don't have to create them. Um, but I don't think you're supposed to sew up to that point. Um, as you can see here on the front of the cover, it's kind of a plunging neckline. It's like a semi-plunging neckline here. And um, it's really closer to the, um, the gathers here, if you can see that center front uh, seam here for the two front sections of the bodice. It's closer to your empire waist gathered line here and I sewed mine up quite far because I didn't really want it to be plunging on me and I'm glad that I did because I mean I can stand to go down maybe an inch and a half here but um if I have it all the way down here everything will be showing everything will show so I decided to go ahead and sew it up to that notch and the notch is um, on the pattern so you don't really have to try to figure out where you want it to be um, for someone who might have a fuller, a fuller bust than myself. You might need to uh, think about you know where you want to place it if you don't want to have a deep V in your neck garment. But I like the way that it's coming out. Um, I find it interesting that on the cover, it always shows like really nice, pretty full gathers, but you never really get that experience when you're actually sewing it. So I don't know if I want to increase the skirt here waistline so I can get more gathers or if that's enough. I don't know. But I really like the way that it's turning out so far. And, and I'm hoping that this will be done by Wednesday. So I am showing this to you in real time. Like I am making this video Saturday morning. Um, haven't done any edits or uploaded it or anything. So I'm hoping to get this done this weekend. And um, maybe I can do the review of this on Wednesday. So that is my plans for this right here. So I have two more projects that I am working on, but I did not get very far with these two except for uh, tracing out the pattern pieces for it. So this pattern is the Shade Dress by Chalk and Notch, and I am obsessed. I am so obsessed with this pattern here. So this pattern by Chalk and Notch, and I'll put it right here so you can see what the silhouette looks like and the art line, uh, because I'm just sharing with you the pattern pieces here. And this is what I worked on last week. I was working on trying to figure out what I need for my bust and um, 
the cup size and all that good stuff so i decided to go with the c cup and i think this is a size so i can choose between the size 14 and 16. so i think i'm going to start with the size 16 and then if it's too big i will go to the size 14. so i think with the size uh 16 i think it's like 43 inches for the bus and for the size 14 it's 41 inches for the bus i am going to try to use a rayon chalet for this project and so um it will give a little bit but not much and so that's why i was um trying to figure out if i need to go with the size of 16 or the size 14 and i don't know how true to size it is so i need to go ahead and do a uh, mock-up for the bodice i have not done that yet so again, I chose the C cup instead of the D cup because of the sizing. And if you notice here on the back, so this is the back of the dress. So you can do, um, you could do multiple styles with this, which I really love. So you can either do a bodice that has a center front with um, no buttons or no center seam or anything like that. Or you can do a variation where there is a um, center front uh, button placket that goes all the way down and extends down into the yoke as well as the tear on the dress portion or the skirt portion of the dress, which I really love. So the back though, I believe the back, um, when I printed out my pattern anyway. I didn't see any other adjustments or alterations or any different variations that I could choose for the back bodice. And the back bodice um, is a little bit too low cut for me. So this is the original line for the back bodice, which is very deep. Um, and I wanted a higher one. And so I raised my neckline and the back up about, I think this is like two and a half inches. And so I, or oh, three inches. I have it here three inches so I raised it up three inches and again on the back you can either place it on fold or you can cut two pieces out and you can put your zipper if you're doing the center front button band variation then you would put it on fold if you're doing the variation where the front is on fold you would put um, you would cut out the back twice and then you would put a zipper in the back of the garment so I really like this it has uh, princess seams here and as you can see it's very very detailed you have um, you're cutting out uh, two princess seam portions for your side front and you're cutting out so this is the side back here and then this is the side front and you're going to be cutting out two for each because you need um actually four for each i'm sorry because you need um two for your main for each side of the body and then two for your lining because this garment is lined through the bodice so i love that and then this is your uh, center front and center back pieces of that portion um, that goes with it. And then for your skirt, you have, this is the yoke. Is this the front or the back? This is your yoke piece. And this is the, I don't know. I didn't mark it. I need to mark that. <laughs> so this is the yoke piece here. And I don't know if there's a center front and back or or I don't know maybe I'm cutting this piece out twice I'm kind of confused I got two patterns here <laughs> so um so yeah I think this is the front and the back no because this is just cut one on fold so this must be the front my back pattern piece must be upstairs somewhere so that's your yoke piece and then what I like about this is you have two tiers so depending on how long you want your skirt you can do um a tier dress that has um just one tier or two so yeah you have all these pieces here that you are using for your skirt front and back i hope i didn't confuse anyone <laughs> and again depending on whether you want your dress to have a center front seam or i'm sorry to be on um the center fold or if you want um a button band on the front will determine whether or not you will cut these pieces out twice or once so that is that and then here is the sleeve pattern right here 
which I really love. And this is the short sleeve that you can put a little band on the end, but I think I might just put elastic in mine. Uh, so yeah, so that is a pattern that I am working on. And for the fabric, I haven't chosen my fabric yet, but I am thinking about a few fabrics and uh, this orange, this black and uh, orange, orange fabric is one of the fabrics that I was thinking about using that I purchased from Hobby Lobby a couple years ago. And I think I have like over four yards of fabric here. So I might not be able to do the full maxi length version, but I might be able to get away with a knee length version of the shade dress. So I'm thinking about doing that. And I've been dying to use this fabric ever since I got it and I haven't used it yet. And I hope I can use it this year because I didn't get to use it last year or the year before that. So I'm hoping to use this because it's a really nice, fun summer print. Now, this isn't like my plans video. I will put a separate plans video for June up. But um, currently, this is just what I have been in the process of sewing. But I do have um, plans that I intend to do for June. Most of my plans for June includes um, matching sets for my husband and my son and I and so you'll see all of the different fabrics that I want to use for that and also um, the different patterns for that so uh, stay tuned for my plans video I'll try to get that up if not this upcoming week the week after next the um, last thing that I have been working on and this pattern is the Frida blouse pattern by Atelier Joupe I hope I'm pronouncing that right it's a French company um, Atelier Joupe and I am so excited to make this. I purchased this as a PDF copy, and so that's why you're seeing it like this. I want to just go ahead and get the printed copy, but I haven't been able to find any of these patterns in the United States, and it's kind of pricey to get it off of their website. And so I have decided to just go ahead and purchase it. It was 9 euros which i believe was somewhere around like 11 or 12 dollars for a u.s currency and so it's not that bad but um i did have to put the pieces all together and i'll share with you an image of what it looks like and some of the garments that people have made with this pattern oh my goodness so phenomenal i love the yoke on this it's very different and it's very fun I've had some trouble trying to decipher like what lines I'm supposed to cut on because they have like multiple lines and it's very different from commercial patterns in the United States as well as indie patterns in the United States. And so I've been having some trouble figuring out how to decipher which line I'm actually supposed to cut on um, because when I printed it, it didn't have an option for like a color copy option which was really frustrating but i am trying to figure it out and um it's not so much the width that i'm struggling with as like the top of at the top of the pattern here where your yoke would go um and i understand like this these dots here that's um this wavy dotted line is for gathering to put the yoke on but again, um, there's a lot of lines here, more that would account for, you know, the size of the pattern, like what the sizes of the pattern run up to. So anyway, it, it's a really nice pattern. It goes up to like a size 52. So it's not very size inclusive, but it's, it's kind of, it has your standard size inclusivity um, in this pattern, which I really like about the pattern. So I'm really happy. Um, to do this and you have this long sleeve that has a cuff at the bottom of the sleeve which is really nice you have a button band um, at the center front I think this is the button band here the placky you have a button band that you're putting down the center front of the garment so that you can um, you know put your buttons on your center front there you're cutting the front piece out twice here's your yoke piece for the front and for the back, which will offer for really great um, color blocking options. And this is the neck uh, band that goes on the top of the, the garment there. So you don't have any facings or anything like that. You're cutting these pieces out twice on fold and you're putting those around the neckline. So I'm really happy about that. I have so many different um, 
printed pattern ideas in mind that um, for fabrics that I am thinking about. Most of them are from Minerva and Minerva um, just released uh, this uh, Minerva exclusive I think it's called popcorn jelly or something like that fabric which is absolutely gorgeous they have so many different colors that you can choose from there's a navy blue one that have like these really beautiful um circular uh pink and um i can't even remember all the colors but i'm ordering that fabric and i'm hoping to get that soon so that i can actually use that fabric or um, I have one of the popcorn jelly fabrics that I ordered about, I think, two months ago. And I'll share with you what it looks like. Now, this is the one that's on the cream background. And it's really, really colorful, which I think is really gorgeous. So, I think that would be really cute um, in it. Um, and again, there are two other colors that I have ordered that I think would be absolutely phenomenal with this. There's a really nice um sea blue color that is absolutely gorgeous and amazing again i'll put it here so you can see what it looks like i think that color would be really great for this top as well um or either either a solid rayon or you know any kind of um rayon or you know viscose type fabric would be really gorgeous um, I'm just digging in my stash here as I'm talking so I can share with you some other ideas here that I have. So here's a blue rayon chalet. If I were to go um, solid, I would do either this color or a navy blue or, um, you know, something like that. Maybe even a purple, a soft purple would be really nice. And then this fabric here, this was a remnant that I got, but I have this in a larger quantity. This would be very gorgeous in this top for this top pattern as well which i think would be really really great um so those are some ideas that i had for the frida blouse and what i am thinking for those projects so i am going to go ahead and let you all go because this is one of my lengthy videos and um, if you stayed this long, thank you so much for tuning in to today's video. I hope you all have a blessed and happy Saturday. Go ahead and drop me a few of your comments in the comment section below. Let me know what you're working on this month. What are some of your ideas for summer and what you are excited about in terms of sewing? Like, it, are there new patterns that you're picking up? or new things that you're working on, please share those things in the comment section below. I do take these comments that you share with me and I often, I look up the pattern suggestions that you guys mention and some of the things that you are saying that you're working on so I could get an idea of what your garments might look like. All right, thank you for sharing your time with me today. I hope you all have a blessed and happy Saturday and I look forward to sharing with you my makes on Wednesday. Stay creative, everyone. Bye.